One of the best things about creating content is the freedom to just be creative and using a green screen can not only just be fun, but it's also very practical. Oftentimes green screens could be used for things like live streaming or gaming, where you have a video playing behind you, or maybe you're doing a demonstration of something on screen and maybe you just wanna actually just change your background after you film your video. Green screen is the only way that would allow you to do that. And that's why in this video, I'll be showing you how to step-by-step -step properly do a green screen so that you can level up your content and crush more videos. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar El Takori with Think Media, and this video is sponsored by Camtasia. Camtasia is a program that makes editing video an easier process so that you can create more content. I'll be using Camtasia at the end of this video when I show you how to remove your background. However, whatever editing software you're currently using, the principles I'm teaching in this video will still be applicable. So the first thing I wanna talk about is setting up your green screen or your paper. For me, I actually went to my local camera store and found a roll of Tech Green Savage paper. And this comes in several different sizes, depending on how much you need. The one behind me is a roll that is about nine feet long. And I actually made a video on how I created kind of like this corner setup. But you can use many different ways to actually set up a backdrop behind you. They also make retractable green screens. So if you actually just want to tear it down after you're filming or doing a live stream, you can do so. So if you want to check out what I'm using or if you want to check out a retractable solution, then be sure to check out those links. The second tip is lighting. And I believe this is the most important tip and you don't want to miss anything or else it's going to be really frustrating later on. Now the key thing when it comes to lighting is really learning about the lights that you actually need. The first light is gonna be your key light. You need a light that's gonna shine on your face to light you up and separate you from the background. Now you wanna make sure that this light isn't so bright that you're casting a shadow onto your green screen or blue screen or whatever. However, that would introduce the second type of light you'll need. And that is the lights or light that you will use to actually light up your background. You need to be able to do the best you can to achieve one flat color behind you. So if there's any wrinkles or maybe there's some shadows coming in, you wanna make sure you're removing that with either more light or removing yourself from the background. A mistake I made was putting a light behind me and shooting it up just at one spot. It created a vignette, which is introducing too many shades of color. So when it got closer to my face, it was actually removing myself from the actual image. And then the third light you're gonna want is a hair light. This is the light that's gonna be aimed at your head and shoulders that will help you be more separated from the background and make the editing software determine where you are as opposed to the screen later on in post. Now some things to keep into consideration, obviously, is to not wear the same color that you have on the background. So don't wear green because if you do that, then you're actually gonna be floating and invisible. But those are some things to keep in mind, which leads to tip number three, and that is to do a test record and edit really quick to make sure that you're ready to go before you actually shoot your video. You don't wanna shoot an entire green screen video to then just find out that you didn't properly light it or it didn't properly work for some reason, or you accidentally were wearing something green, I don't know, maybe a green ring or something. You just don't wanna get in editing and then it'd be a headache later on. So drag that clip into your editing software and in Camtasia, it's called Remove Color Effect. Maybe your software may call it a color key or something like that, but you wanna add this effect to your video and then use the color picker to select the green background or maybe blue background. And then you wanna click an area of the screen close to your face because that's gonna be the green that you need removed most. And then what you wanna make sure is that nothing gets removed that you don't want to be removed, obviously. Uh, I found one other way that you can do this with other softwares is add the effect a second time. So maybe you started removing the green screen the first time, but there was still some left over. You can actually layer another effect. And then in that case, I would click more of the border of your green screen and then remove that color of green or blue in that case. But the key is to just adjust your lighting until you evenly light your green screen at the proper color so that it gets removed. The next tip is to then add your background. If you have a video that you wanna throw behind you, then you just wanna place it underneath yourself or whoever is on camera when you are editing. And usually editing softwares work in a track system. You wanna put the person on camera up top. If it's a static image or just a picture, you can drag it underneath your video file and then just make any necessary tweaks that you need to by scaling it or trimming it down. What's actually cool about messing with green screen in post is actually the ability to scale yourself or the person on camera. If you wanna make that person bigger and take up more of the frame, or if you wanna make yourself smaller and put your face on one of the corners of the shot. Another edit you could make to your video file is to actually crop the ends. 
because uh, you don't necessarily need the full video uh, necessarily unless you're filling the frame yourself. But if you're just a small portion of the video screen, it might be helpful to crop in the left and right as well as top and bottom if you wanna make sure your ends are clean and deleted. Another cool way to utilize your green screen is to actually add a motion background, which is simply a moving background that isn't too busy, but it definitely could level up your production value. If you do wanna add a motion graphic, there's a lot of online libraries with assets you can choose. TechSmith Assets for Camtasia has over 20 million assets available, whether that be video clips, lower thirds, royalty-free music, and more. It's well-priced, and probably my favorite thing about this is that you can import these files directly into Camtasia by clicking on the Camtasia logo and then it'll be automatically moved inside of your media bin. I would say though, if you don't have Camtasia, it's still a great option to use for assets uh, because a lot of the times even creating content, you'll need music and specifically royalty free music and it solves that issue as well. So I'd actually recommend TechSmith assets for whatever software you're currently using. So that's how you do a green screen step by step. And if you got value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button. And if you have any questions about this process, put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer any and all of those questions. But I do wanna let you know if you are interested in using Camtasia, we actually have a special discount going on. It's a 10% discount when you use the code THINKMEDIA10. So be sure to check out the link down in the description below. And if you wanna see the tutorial or the video I made on how I created this faux corner with a piece of paper, then be sure to click or tap the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.